Looks like we got my lovely bride is on this morning. We got two folks joining us. <clears throat> Give it just a second longer. Rasma, good morning. My good friend Paul Lively is on. Outstanding. Hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. Santa was good to me. Hope he was good to you. We got four folks on. Uh, I guess without further ado, let's get started. Uh, is my audio good? Give me a thumbs up if we're if the audio is good. Didn't have time to do a test run this morning. Good morning, James. And again, if the audio is good, let me know and we will run with it. Thanks to the uh, 10 folks that are joining me this morning. Rasmus is five by five, sweet. Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Rich. I am the uh, co-founder of the American Warrior Society, co-host the American Warrior Show, retired Marine Corps officer, former law enforcement officer, former corrections officer, uh, Sheriff's Department Special Operations officer. And then I, uh, Went into the Red Cross, man, and um, was a disaster preparedness manager and government operations guy for the state of Tennessee. I sat on the uh, Tennessee Emergency Management Council and all this other stuff. So did that for <clears throat> long enough to realize that disaster preparedness was really a lot of work. And I worked uh, some disaster, disaster relief operations. And now I'm here, the American Warrior Society. And I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Like, share, comment if you do that. And we hit 15, we're up to 17 viewers right now. If we hit 15, someone will win a tumbler. And uh, Mr. Skip Davis is on here last week when we hit, I think, 140 live viewers. Skip won the random drawing. So congrats, Skip. The tumbler is on its way to you, sir. And this morning I'm having my coffee out of this amazing little espresso mug that my darling bride got for me. It says, American Warrior Society, the fight's coming, be ready. And I'm checking with Will, who does our fulfillment, to see if we can get you guys some of these, too. Uh, currently, it's not in our store, but hopefully it will be very soon. Kevin Park says, good morning. Miss Lisa says, good audio. Will Davis, good morning, Rich. Skip, good morning, Rich. Mark says, good morning, Rich. Donald, good morning, sir. AWS Texan. Coin number 1499, and if you're a coin number, please let me know what your coin number is. Uh, she says, 15 live viewers now, 50. Mr. Eric Grooms is joining us. Good morning, sir, and, and so is Doug Lightfoot. <clears throat> All right, without further ado, got a lot to cover this morning. This morning, this coffee with the rich is gonna be uh, based around our upcoming trip to the United Kingdom. And we are gonna go start off in Ireland. <clears throat> We're gonna start off in Dublin, Ireland. Next, I think we arrive next Wednesday. We're gonna go up to Belfast, Omaha, back down to Dublin, fly to Edinburgh, and we'll do uh, another week and a half in in, um, in Scotland. We're gonna go over to the Outer Hebrides, the, uh, the Western Isles of Scotland. I really look forward to that trip. And let's see here. Skip says, thanks for the tumbler. I'm looking forward to it. Walt Davis, good morning. Miss Lisa. Gordon, good morning. Coin number 1688 from Ohio. Paul Lively, coin number 1231. Kevin, coin number 1334. Walt Davis, coin number 138. <coughs> Mr. Gerald E's in Oregon, coin number 952. Uh, Doug Lightfoot. Uh, Doug, you wrote the one who... Doug, you wrote the article that I quoted last week about uh, teaching your children self-defense. Thank you again for writing for us, sir. And Mr. Mike Seeklender's on. He wants to know who is motivated today. I know I'm motivated. It's Friday, the day after a wonderful Christmas, um, and let's push on. So the article I want to share with you this morning, and again, all of our articles are free, AmericanWarriorSociety.com. You don't have to be a member to read the articles. We've got hundreds of articles in there written by really top shelf people, very credentialed folks, professionals in their field. And this one's no different than the one I'm gonna to talk to you this morning about. It is United Kingdom Everyday Carry by Nick Thomas. 
and Nick is, that's not his real name, Nick is a London police officer assigned to a specialized unit, and Nick get, goes over what he carries in, in the UK. Because <clears throat> even in London, the police officers cannot take their firearms off duty with them. So what does he carry? Well, the number one thing that Nick will tell you that he carries, and he tell, discusses this in his article, is his training. And I love the way he describes it. He says something like, what I carry with me is every single time I bit down on a gum shield, you know, a, a mouth guard, every bit of trauma training that I've got, every, you know, trauma casualty training, every, every round of sparring I ever did, I carry that with me and, and I agree with him 100%. Some of the gadgets that Nick carries that you, you'll see me discuss here in a little bit when I talk about what I'm gonna be carrying, he carries a watch. He carries a cell phone. He carries his departmental cell phone. He carries a wallet. He carries his credentials. He carries a flashlight, a pen, latex gloves, uh, a Spyderco honeybee, which is a UK legal knife, and we're gonna talk about my UK legal knife here in a minute, and chewing gum. And Nick t talks about it being just a really great icebreaker to offer someone a chewing gum because he's, again, he's in a specialized undercover unit and it's just a good way to start a conversation. Another thing that Nick carries I thought was pretty interesting, he carries a memento mori coin. Can anyone tell me what that means in Latin? Memento mori, and I may be mispronouncing it. And while I let you think about that and tell me what it means, we'll see who else is on this morning. Mark says, good morning, Mike. Mr. Jeff Brown, my brother, is on. Rasmic says he is motivated times two. Mr. Adam Boyce is joining us. Good morning, Adam. And LQ Monroe. Anybody figured out what memento mori means? Memento mori means remember you will die or remember that you are mortal. And he carries that <clears throat> as a reminder in his pocket at all times as a reminder that this time on, life, on earth is fleeting. And it reminds him to train. It reminds him to not th take things so seriously. It reminds him to enjoy life. I think it's a really interesting, a really interesting thing to do. And you know, speaking of coins in your pocket, I do this quite often. And we talk about coins in our pocket and I've shown you this a few times and I think it's absolutely a breathtaking coin. This is the American Warrior Society coin. I guess you can't see that. Let me back out. These glow in the dark. Not a lot of people know that, and they'll get them home and put them, like I have all my coins behind me, and then they turn off the lights and this thing is glowing. And it says Warriors Wanted. Because in a society where a lot of times warriors, men and women that engage in the warrior profession, taking care of their families, um, keeping them safe, are often looked on as toxic masculinity and all this other kind of stuff. Well, we wanted to, we put that on there to let you know that you're welcome here. Uh, you will find family here amongst other like-minded individuals. We're up to 33. Thank you for the 36 people that are joining me live. Again, my name is Rich Brown, uh, co-founder of the American Warrior Society, co-host the American Warrior Show, uh, retired Marine officer, former law enforcement officer, corrections officer, special operations officer, etc. And we just got done talking about the article you need to read, which is United Kingdom Everyday Carry. Let's talk about show number 192 and 193. And the reason that I'm gonna, <clears throat> the reason I want you to check those shows out, they're absolutely free. Go into podcast app on your iPhone or your Android device, and you can find our show, The American Warrior Show. Show number 192 and 193 were on non-linear situational awareness. And uh, non-linear situation awareness, you know, we talk about body language, we talk about baselining, cultural baselining, we talk about micro and macro uh, situational awareness. And the reason that I think that I wanted to discuss that this morning was because situational awareness is really a lot of what you can be armed with when the government has taken all your tools away from you. But they cannot disarm you mentally because the most the biggest weapon you carry around with you is a six inches between your ears. That's not Rich Brown talking. I believe that was General Mattis and I agree with him 100%. We got a lot of folks on this morning. Uh, Doug has joined us watching from Newton, Kansas. Ah, Jennifer Powers uh, Bunch is on here. Uh, we did some disaster relief stuff with the Red Cross. 
Dallas is on. Good morning, Mr. Doug Ryan's uh, uh, an outstanding Marine. I uh, had the pleasure of serving with him. Gene is on. Okay, 49 folks. Somebody's about to win a tumbler if we hit 50, and I look forward to sending that out to you if we hit 50. So let's talk about, uh, we talked about show number 192 and 193. We had to break it up for you. If you don't know what cultural baselining is, it's a really interesting concept. Uh, Mike and I didn't come up with it. It's actually from the book Left of Bang. These two gentlemen that wrote the book, they, they created the Combat Hunter Program for the United States Marine Corps. It's been used around the world. Check out the book Left of Bang if you want to know more. Or you can just listen to podcast number 192 and 193 of the American Warrior Show. Talk about swag, man. If you hadn't noticed, <clears throat> like I said, I'm, I'm drinking out of my little espresso cup, and I had this made. There's only one in existence right now. I'm trying to get uh, Will Wood, who does our fulfillment, see if he can make some of these for us. But I like it because my it just keeps my espresso. I'm also wearing the new logoed American Warrior Society hoodie, and I'm a big fan of it, man. It is really quality stuff. So you definitely want to check these out. We've got everything available for you on the store, AmericanWarriorShow.com. You can click on the store or AmericanWarriorSociety.com. Did we hit 50? Somebody says we hit 50. All right. Well, congratulations to someone for winning the Tumblr. The gadget. <clears throat> All right, guys. Without further ado, let's get into the gadget because this is going to be kind of a, maybe a, this show might run over just a little bit. When I go to uh, Scotland and Ireland next week, can I carry with me my Glock 26 and my Precision Holsters Ultra Appendix Holster? And I've even written G26 on here so I know exactly what it is. And I think you should do this too, but can I carry this? No, I cannot carry that. So that's out. <clears throat> can I carry a sap or a blackjack? No, they won't let you carry that. Can I carry a can of pepper spray, like this Sabre Red? No, pepper spray will give you 10 years. 10 years in a British prison. Can I carry my Spyderco uh, Yojimbo 2 opener on it? No, it's a locking knife and it's way too long and way too scary for the UK. So what can I carry? <clears throat> well, we're gonna get into that, but before we do, let's see who's on here this morning. Mark says, situational awareness is vital because the enemy wants you to become fixated, tunnel vision to on any distractions they can create. Yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, we got a new show coming out this weekend where I discuss an event that we had here on the farm and go into a lot of details and lessons learned, and I, you're absolutely right. I, target fixation is real. You can definitely hone in on a target and lose sight of everything going on around you. You really got to Open your aperture up, Mark. You're absolutely right. Check out the show that we got coming up this weekend. Wearing man's ring, also very useful when forced to throw a punch. Yeah, definitely can't hurt. Okay, let's talk about what I am going to carry. Well, this isn't part of my everyday carry, but I think it's important to have with you printed copies of everything, all of our, uh, our itinerary, where we're going to be staying, what we're going to be doing. It's all in there all the airbnbs we're going to be staying at everything is right there so that if our phones go down electronics go down we've at least got that maps to everywhere we're going etc so again proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance as someone once said and let's see what am i going to take them with me well one of the things i'm going to be taking with me in this environment where i can't carry anything bottle of water We've talked about this before, but a bottle of water, number one, stays hydrate, hydrated, but number two, uh, it's going to prevent, well, it's one of the only things you can do in the event of an acid attack. And I know you're saying, Rich, acid attacks, really, bro, you're, you're worried about an acid, acid attack? Well, I'm afraid so, because uh, acid attacks in the UK is the highest anywhere in the world. They are averaging 15 a week. 15 acid attacks a week where they just walk up to you, throw acid in your face, and move on. And one of the only things you can do is flush your face with water until someone gets there because my pet theory is that when you 
take someone's pepper spray away, you take away all these other things that criminals use. You think they're gonna stop robbing people? No, instead of pepper spraying somebody and robbing them, they're probably just gonna throw acid in their face and literally melt the, the face off of someone so that they can rob them. I mean, it's horrific stuff. But the number one thing I'm gonna be taking before a bottle of water and before all the other gadget, gadgets and gizmos I'm gonna show you is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm gonna be carrying Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with me because you can't take that away. You can't take away gravity. You can't take away physics. You can't take away my years, uh, 23 years in the Marine Corps, my three years in law enforcement, my years of the Red Cross disaster relief, uh, disaster preparedness. You cannot disarm me of all that knowledge that I've acquired, all the training. So that is the number one thing I'm gonna be carrying more than all the other junk that I'm gonna be uh, showing you. So let's see what else we got here. Elkie said acid isn't illegal to carry. Well, the thing is, you know, it's a it, uh, it's a cleaning product, man. I mean, it's one of those things. I don't know. I'm sure it probably is illegal to carry, but if you're walking around on a Starbucks cup, who knows what's in it until the minute they take the lid off and douse it in your face. So horrific stuff. So don't forget, number one, if they completely disarm you of everything and you're standing there naked in the street, you still got all the training that you put into your, your body and your mind. Let's look what else we got. So the next thing we're gonna be carrying, oh, your buddy Rich Brown's gonna be carrying is his phone. And I was gonna, I'm like, where's my phone? I'm talking to you on my phone right now. So I can't show you my phone, but suffice it to say, you carry a phone and the phone can do a lot of things for you. It can help you navigate it can help you obviously communicate with your loved ones. It can help you uh, do a quick Google search, obviously, if you need to do that. Remember that where you're going, they're probably not gonna be on the 911 system. In the UK, they operate on 999. Now, a lot of cell phone carriers are already um, created so that they'll make the leap from 911 to 999 in the host country you're in because every country's different. We're one of the few places where it is 911 but it's 999 in the UK, and you need to know that before you go. Uh, uh, let's see here. Mark says, one mind, any weapon. Yeah, I was a Marine Corps close combat instructor, and back in the day, that was that was our saying, one mind, any weapon. Mike Seeklander said, naked in the streets. That would be weird. Yeah, it would be. Doug Lightfoot says, great point. No one can take your hand-to-hand -hand skills from you and your brain to see trouble brewing so you can evade or de-escalate, and of course, Doug Lightfoot is a patrol lieutenant up in Ohio. Elkie says, like Clorox. Yeah, they, they, they're literally throwing all kinds of stuff, not just acid, but sometimes bleach. It's uh, horrific over there, and um, it really is just an unbelievable what they're doing over there to people. So, the next thing, ballistic glasses. <clears throat> now, when I have glasses made, I have them made with polycarbonate lenses on here so that they offer me ballistic protection, just like my shooting glasses. And then, of course, my sunglasses, these are Oakleys, but all the Oakleys are ballistic rated. So again, ballistic glasses can help you in the event of an explosion, any kind of wind and debris, bloodborne pathogens, acid attacks, all these things, ballistic glasses can afford you that little bit of protection. So I will definitely be walking around with that. Rental car keys, room keys, you know, that's another thing you'll be carrying with you. These are my personal keys. Believe it or not, you know, I, I've checked into Airbnbs where me and Miss Lisa wanted to crack open a bottle of wine and there was no wine opener. So I do carry this. I carry this on flights with me. Uh, I could put my hand in it and maybe punch someone. I'll let you judge that, but I've never had TSA look at this weird. You're, you're allowed to carry a wine opener and has a, a, a wine opener and a bottle opener on it, and it's a carabiner. I'll show you how it works. And I've never had a problem going through TSA with this, but who knows? What else we're gonna have with us? We're gonna have with us a watch. Now, a watch, you know, can be, I can use it to barter with, defend with. Uh, I will, I normally carry a big Seiko. I'm not now, I got an Apple Watch Santa was kind enough to give me, so I will be using my uh, Apple Watch probably. Currency is king, my friends. We went to Italy recently, my wife and I, and as soon as we stepped off the plane, we went to an ATM and got out some of the local currency. Now, just a bit about that. 
you know, when you're thinking about preparedness. That was probably a dumb thing to do. What we probably should have done was go to a local bank here in the States before we leave, and if you give them enough lead time, they'll give you the currency with a small transaction fee. You can do that with ATMs, but what if the ATM is down? Well, it wasn't down. There's a currency converter kiosks you'll find where there's a woman sitting there or a man, and they'll give you in, in exchange for some markup fee. Please don't do that if you don't have to because they will charge you an outlandish fee. Use your ATM or get the currency before you leave. Here are some uh, pound notes. Know the currency of where you're going. You know, in Ireland, the currency is the euro. In Scotland and the rest of the UK, it's the British pound. And then they have Scottish pounds. This is a Scottish five pound note. It's good in Scotland, but not necessarily good anywhere else outside of Scotland, which kind of can be wonky. But take the local currency, because when we got to Italy, the first several places we stopped, the Wi-Fi was down and they we couldn't use the card. So thank God we got a, a lot of currency before we left the airport. Doug Lightfoot says, hook a lanyard to those keys and you have a modified flail. Yeah, currency exchanges at airports. Yeah, those currency exchanges at airports will charge you uh, quite, a, quite a bit of fee. So your ATM, the way those work, when you use your ATM overseas, you're gonna get charged an international fee. You might get charged a fee if you're operating outside your normal, you know, Bank of America, Barclay, all these other things. But the fee still will be like, you might get an international transaction fee of three bucks and another fee for using their ATM of like $3. So for six bucks, you're gonna get back hundreds of dollars in the local currency without the 10% fee of those currency exchange kiosks and stuff. So something to think about when you're considering the local currency because cash is king folks I'm telling you right now yeah Doug says I would never choose to visit the UK just because I can't carry a lethal weapon man I hear you Doug and I really respect what you're saying I will tell you this not to sound like a, a, a smart ass because I'm, I'm not bro I'm the lethal weapon and the things that I carry with me are just tools whether that's my G26 that I just showed you or an, a, a machete man you're you're the weapon and everything else is just a tool. So I really, that's the way I look at it anyway. But I respect you, Doug. And if you don't want to go, man, don't go. Um, Edinburgh, where we're going to be at, is the safest place in the UK. I looked for terrorist attacks in Scotland. There's, there was one in 2007 where they tried to ram the gate of Glasgow to jihadists. And their, their explosive device exploded in the car, didn't injure anyone other than the two uh, scumbags, and set them on fire. Nobody else got hurt. So that was the one jihadi terrorist Islamic extremist attack that happened on Scottish soil. Okay, so I showed you, uh, we talked about local currency. I'm going to be carrying, obviously, my wallet. Now on the other side is my uh, retired Marine officer credentials. I'll probably invert them. Nobody needs to see that. I, it's carried in an RF, RFID wallet. Now these people will tell you that you don't really need an RFID wallet, that the threat of someone skimming you at a tourist location and skimming the electronic data off your cards is probably not a real threat. I've read the articles, guys, but uh, it's a nice looking leather wallet. And the, the fact that it's RFID and can protect me from some sort of threat like that, it, it couldn't hurt. Um, let's see, bef flashlight. Man, I tell you what, I can't say enough good things about carrying a flashlight. This is the Streamlight Protac 1L. It can be used for a lot of different uh, neat things. It can disorient, disorient your attacker. I find these very useful as uh, we climb around castles and things of this nature. You know, uh, my wife and I, when we were in Italy, we were down in the bowels of this ancient Roman Colosseum, and there's no lighting, there's no handrails. Everything's wet and mossy, and being able to light a path is, is amazing. So I highly encourage you to carry a flashlight everywhere you go, not just in UK. Let's talk about UK legal knives because believe it or not, folks, you can carry a knife in the UK. Even though you see these uh, these big things, you know, surrender your knives here, surrender your Norwal tusks here, and all this stuff, 
you actually can carry a knife, but you gotta, you gotta be smart about it and you gotta do your homework. So before I get into my UK legal knife, let's see who's on here. Wendy Ayler is on, Wendy Ayler Bowman, excuse me. Eric Grooms, train them hands, Doug, yeah. Dallas says my feet is frozen. I'm sorry about that, Dallas. Elkie says, ever been to Dublin, Shannon, Ireland? Seems quite safe going there next summer. Elkie, we are going to Dublin. That's where we land on January the 1st. Uh, Skip says, check out Ridge Wallet if you carry in your front pocket. I do carry my front pocket. I used to go to Mexico uh, almost every single weekend when I was stationed out in California for several months and loved Mexico. But I got in the habit of carrying my, my wallet in the front pocket when I was in Mexico just to discourage some pickpocketers. Just like I carry my uh, firearm in the appendix position. I like all my stuff up front where I have custody of it. I don't want to be bending over and putting stuff in, in my truck and have, give someone access to all my stuff behind me. So the UK legal knife. This is one of them, and I, I like this one. To be UK legal, the blade cannot lock. This blade does not lock. So you say, well, Rich, I'd be afraid of that thing closing in my hand, and I agree with you. I've had knives close in my hand, and I got the stitches right here to prove it. But what's interesting is you put this finger right here, your thumb right here, and I can use this edge weapon and the um, Marshall Blade Filipino uh, knife fighting style. Okay? So all the things I learned with Mr. Michael Janich out at Warrior Blade Camp, I can use with this knife. And it's made by Bird by Spyderco. It's a cheap little $20 knife, but it can complies with all the UK restrictions. The blade length itself is two inches long, which again, it cannot be longer than this. And I think it actually might be 1.9 G10 handle. And it's non-locking knife. So when you think non-locking knife, a lot of us would think of something like this. You know, the blade doesn't lock. Right? It's a Swiss Army knife. The blade does not lock. Well, neither does this one. And you protect yourself by putting your finger here. Now, I have taken a small zip tie and put it right here inside this hole so that when I draw the knife, it acts as a wave opener and deploys the knife. And I got a little spooked and took it off because I, even though I trained with it, I'm like, you know what, man, I, the, the laws of knives are really clear about there cannot be anything on this that would make it deploy faster. So I'm just not going to do it. This is a legal knife. The last time I was in the UK, I carried this knife with me. I didn't have any Bobby look at me weird, even though it was clipped in my pocket. I think uh, this year, it's been over two years since I went to the UK. Knife attacks have gotten worse. I'm not gonna advertise it this year. I'm probably just gonna let it slide on into my pocket or I'll carry this in my hoodie. So <clears throat> the, the issue you're gonna run into with carrying an edge weapon is why are you carrying it? Well, I'm carrying it to use it. Same reason I carry a gun. I'm not carrying a gun because it makes me feel cool. Actually, I don't like carrying a gun, but I carry a gun in the event that I might have to use it someday. Now I say that because proportionality. Uh, the self-defense laws in the UK are written very similar to ours because our self-defense laws are based on English common law. So the, the, the actual text of the self-defense laws in the UK are very, very similar. The application of those laws and the translation of those laws, however, are different. We're up to 55 live viewers. If you're joining me right now, thank you and welcome to Coffee with the Rich. We're talking about my United Kingdom everyday carry and of course, I'm a former law enforcement officer, retired Marine Corps officer, Red Cross disaster preparedness guy, et cetera. And we're discussing all the things I'm gonna be carrying in Ireland and Scotland upcoming. Proportionality is what we're talking about and the laws in the UK. If I am forced to defend myself with this, um, I'm using a lethal deadly force weapon against someone or, or someone's, if that's a word. So my point of saying all that is to say, I better know what I'm doing if I decide to deploy this thing against someone. And uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that. All right, I will be carrying a Swiss Army knife because there's so many tools on here that, again, when you get to an Airbnb and you've got something not working, I don't have my tools out in my truck, but I have a Phillips head. 
I have other little gadgets and gizmos on here that can get me out of a jam or, or open up a bottle of wine or whatever we're doing. Also, man, I got into carrying a red bandana or a bandana. And I, like I said, you know, I grew up here in East Tennessee and all these farmers and old timers, they were always carrying around red bandanas or some sort of bandana. And I said, you know, what's all this stuff about? Well, actually a lot. There's a lot you can do with a bandana. You know, you can signal with it, use it like a red panel marker. I can tie it up and make it into an improvised bag. If I had nothing else, I could improvise this thing into a tourniquet. I could use it as a breathing mask. You know, I could take, a, at the beginning I said I'd be carrying my water. I could take this, douse it with water, and use it as a, as a breathing mask. If I just, if it's just dusty outside, I could use it this way. If I wanted to hide, conceal my identity, I could use it like that. I could use it as some mini protection from the sun, make myself a little uh, hat or whatever if I had to. If I find myself muzzle loading in the UK, I could cut a piece off. I'm not gonna be muzzle loading in the UK, but um, you can use a patch for wadding here, a washcloth, a towel, um, a water filtration device. If I'm gonna be filtering water from a stream, letting the particulates that get caught on this before it gets into my jug and I drop in my iodine tablets. Of course, I could use it as a snot rag, uh, uh, a bandage, a napkin. There's just so many things. I really love carrying these. And I, I got into it this year, shooting IDPA a lot, and it was blazing hot in Tennessee. And I had this in my back pocket. I could wipe the sweat off my brow. And uh, I don't know, I find myself carrying it more often than I would not do it. Before I get into my blood kit and all the things that I use for trauma casualty care, let's see who's on. Oh, Roman is joining us, good morning. All right, so I carry a blood kit. Now, it's, it's, it's a small little package. It's actually relatively thin. I mean, right now, the way that I've got this tourniquet in here set up, it's a little bit more puffy than I would like. I run a jacket, when we're gonna be in Scotland, the, um, in Ireland, the weather is gonna be like 30s at night, maybe 40s during the day. So I will be running a jacket the whole time I'm there. I wear a jacket I bought in Scotland last time, which I really, really like. It's a oil, um, it's like a barber coat, if you know what those are. And it has these really amazing big pockets up front and all around it. So I, I have all this stuff on me concealed inside the jacket and it conceals really well. So the first thing I got in this kit is latex gloves. I don't need any weird uh, diseases from any of you people that I might have to treat, so we got the latex gloves in there. The second thing we got in here is a rat's tourniquet. I keep a little rubber band around it. I know that may slow down deployment, but it doesn't slow it down very much. And the rat's tourniquet, if you're not familiar with it. <clears throat> I really like these. Let's say I was gonna use it on myself. Slides up, and I wrap it around three times, and clean it off. A lot of people really don't like the rat's tourniquet. I've seen a lot of negative things on them. Um, I happen to like them. They're good for what they are. They're lightweight. You can actually wear this as a belt around your waist and it conceals very good. The cleat in the front, um, I've worn this as a belt quite often and, and it really doesn't get in the way and it can be used for a whole lot of things, but saving lives is, is uh, definitely at the top of the list. So we've got our latex gloves, our rat's tourniquet, and some sea lock because you can't tourniquet everything. And sea lock, this, this clots blood really fast. I use sea lock because um, I used to be on blood thinners for a medical issue that I had and uh, C-Lock works really good if you're on blood thinners. So if I'm treating someone and they are on blood thinners, C-Lock works really well. You can't tourniquet someone's neck, guys, so that's where the C-Lock comes in and really take care of you. So that's my blood kit, just a small little thing, latex gloves, C-Lock, and a tourniquet. Um, before we go any further, let's see what folks are saying out there. Mr. Roman, my cousin, says good morning. Doug Lightfoot, I understand what you are saying uh, Doug, I guess he's speaking to the other gentleman. I was concerned when I traveled to Israel. Up to that point, I had carried a gun nearly every day for more than 16 years, but I knew I had other skills, including how to choose and use improvised weapons. Improvised weapons are always available, especially if you are looking. 
Yeah, and I want to be very respectful of the gentleman that said he wouldn't go to the UK. Man, I totally respect you. You know, when I was in the, man, I traveled all over Europe carrying concealed firearm for Uncle Sam. So now I'm going as a civilian, and I can't, you know, I can't carry anything in, in Europe. What changed? Well, my my billet changed. Obviously, it, it, Uncle Sam doesn't need me to carry concealed firearm. I'm on my own. And that's why I take some precautions, but I'm not gonna let the fact that I can't carry a concealed firearm dictate where and where I can and cannot go. So enough said on that. Remember, if you train your body and train your mind to recognize things as weapons, like I'll, I'll show you this right here. I carry this on every airplane. I've got three or four of them. I got a black one, I got an orange one, and I got this red one. And you're saying, what is this red? Well, it's a cable lock, that's all but I can, I can do a lot more with this, and I've probably showed you guys this several times. Can't carry a sap, but you didn't say I couldn't carry a lock. And uh, we do lock up our luggage sometimes so that we can visit something, and I, or we do go to the gym and still run on a treadmill and stuff like that, and I need to lock up my stuff. Make sure you carry your keys with you. Am I gonna carry this with me in my back pocket? Probably not but you can carry stuff like this with you. And I have, uh, when we were in, hmm, I think it was Italy. Another thing you can carry is this bandana <clears throat> and a regular lock. I do this all the time. You can take your regular master lock, slide this through, tie a knot off on it, and you, again, you've got an improvised set. There are improvised weapons everywhere around you if you train yourself to look for them. And um, the gentleman that wrote the article for us, we'll call him Nick Thomas C Thompson, because that's what he's writing under, but he's actually a London police officer. He's a member of the American Warrior Society, and he's a London police officer. And he said, hey, the laws here allow you to use any improvised weapon you want in the event. The problem is you just can't carry it with you. You can't knowingly, intentionally walk out of the house carrying a weapon, but you're free to grab a Norwal tusk or fire extinguisher or the, remember that you had a lock in your back pocket that you were gonna lock your, your clothes up with at the uh, gym. Now, <clears throat> I'm almost done with my, with my gear this morning, and I appreciate you've been on uh, 39 minutes with me so far. Stay with me just a little bit longer because this is really cool. Small, uh, a m not much bigger than a credit card. I really like this. Go on Amazon today and Google and uh, search for travel locks and you will find this one. There are several different makers of it, so I can't tell you the exact maker. I think they're made in China. There's, there's nothing that crazy about them. They're incredibly lightweight and, and they're incredibly strong. And you're going, Rich, what does that do? I'm gonna tell you. Because remember, run, hide, fight is the mantra that you need to be thinking about in the event of a terrorist attack, an active shooter, uh, I'm gonna say active killer. I don't like the active shooter. I'm a shooter. If you're watching this today, you're probably a shooter, a responsible, reasonable gun owner, and we shoot all the time. But these people are active murderers, so let's call it what it is. But in the event of a terrorist attack or an active murderer situation, you wanna run, hide, fight. Not necessarily in that order. You might find yourself confronted with a killer and your first thing to do is fight. That's fine. You don't have to run, then hide, then fight. You can do that in any order. So the reason I'm showing you this is because of the hide part. If you hide in a closet, you may die in that closet if you don't have the ability to harden it. So I've been really thinking about hardening lately, especially with schools. You know, the Virginia Tech shooter, I believe he um, went in and then cable locked himself inside there with the students and then killed a bunch of them. If you have something like this in your go bag, your go kit, in your back pocket, wherever, this might save you. And all this thing does, it's a pretty ingenious little design. You put this inside the door, inside the opening where the lock would go, and then this would be protruding out the back, and then you just lock it in place like this. And I, Mike and I are gonna do a video on these because I've got several different versions of these travel locks. Think about it. My wife and I, we like to stay in Airbnbs where we go. We don't like to be in hotels, but you're staying in someone's house. A lot of times the Airbnbs, they don't change the codes from one guest to another. 
So if I'm using the code key, key code on the back to get inside someone's apartment so I can stay there, I like to be able to harden the thing I'm in so that even the homeowner can't get inside there. And that's where these are an amazing little force option. Very cheap, probably 20 bucks, very lightweight, very small and concealable. And uh, again, I have several different versions and Mike and I will be making some video of those, videos of those coming up in the near future and have those available for you on the training vault. So run, hide, fight. They've taken away a lot of my tools to fight with, but that's okay. We, like we said before, we're armed with all the training that we had going into the event. If I need to run, that's okay. I'm not gonna be wearing flip-flops. I'm gonna be wearing my good Solomon boots and I do stay active so I can run. And then if I decide to hide, I have the ability to harden whatever room I find myself in. So that concludes my European EDC. Hope you enjoyed that. Before I get into, I got law stuff to talk to you about, so stay with me just for a few more minutes. Let's see who else is on here. Will says, with all of this fantastic knowledge of a warrior, have you considered joining the American Warrior Society and possibly become an instructor? Uh, love you, Will. Yeah, Will, um, actually one of the co-founders of the American Warrior Society, as you know, my good friend. And Will Parker was, uh, was a guest of ours recently. Will's a retired Naval officer and an all-around great man. Roman says, good, good morning. Doug Lightfoot says, I understand. Okay, we already talked about that. Gene says, great information. Some simple things that we overlook sometimes. Uh, Fast Strike, non-lethal defense product. Dave talks about, yeah, Fast Strike was one of our gadgets, Dave. Uh, you're absolutely right, and I really like those. I don't, I don't know that they're legal in the UK, and I'm afraid I'd be running afoul of the law, but but interesting stuff. Uh, Doug says, have no desire to revisit the UK again. Too many great parts of America to visit. Great parks do not include California, New York, New Jersey, Vermont, etc. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Scott Bowman is joining us. Wade says, good morning, Rich and company. Doug Lightfoot, coin number 50. Oh, we hit 54. Fantastic. Yeah, looking forward to the video of the travel lock. We've got a lot of videos that, that are coming up. Mike and I are gonna be filming. Uh, when I get back, we're gonna team up and we got some, a lot of stuff filmed. What goes in your go bag? How do you set up a go bag? How do you harden a structure that you're in? What's inside your truck? How do you prepare your vehicle uh, to aid you? Because if you've heard our most recent show with Brian Costanza, holy crap. He talks about how as a state trooper, he's been involved in five shootings how he sets his cruiser up to be in a fight, man. It's a phenomenal show. Let's talk about the law real quick. Man, this one came across the other day, and I actually at first thought, man, this is some right-wing propaganda. This is, there's no way that, that this really is true. So I dug into the law, and guess what? It is true. Uh, bill number 402, Virginia Bill 402, Commonwealth of Virginia, says that they are appropriating $250,000 quarter of a million dollars to the 2020 budget that says to increase the operating cost, I'm quoting, I'm reading right out of their, their, their bill, to increase the operating cost of adult correctional facilities resulting from the enactment of sentencing legislation as listed below. And number one, it says, allow the removal of firearms from persons who pose substantial risk to themselves or others. Number two, prohibit the sale, possession, and transport of assault firearms, trigger activators, and silencers. Increase the penalty, this is number three, this is the number three reason why they got a quarter of a million dollar increase in their adult corrections budget. Increase the penalty for allowing a child to access an unsecured firearm. Number four, prohibit the possession of firearms for persons subject to final orders of protection. And number five, required background checks for all firearm sales. So if you listen to that, they're giving additional money to the adult corrections facilities because, let's look at number two again, prohibit the sale, possession, and transport of assault firearms. I don't know what an assault firearm is and I don't think you probably do either. So that is not propaganda, man. That They're really saying we, we're gonna get a quarter of a million dollars more into the budget because we're gonna ban assault firearms. And the uh, Virginia Attorney General, Mark Herring, issued an opinion, I believe this was last Friday. He said, quote, when the General Assembly passes new gun safety laws, they will be enforced 
and they will be followed. Herring, of course, is a Democrat Attorney General of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Mm. Said in announcing this opinion, quote, these resolutions have no legal force. He's talking about sex, Second Amendment sanctuary status. He says, these resolutions have no legal force and they're just part of an effort by the gun lobby to stoke fear. I don't think it's stoking fear at all. You've been very clear about it, um, Mr. Attorney General, as has the governor as to what you're gonna do. And he didn't say if the General Assembly passes new gun safety laws. Let me read it to you again. He says, when the General Assembly passes new gun safety laws, they will be enforced and they will be followed, um, even if they're unconstitutional is what the underlying message of this is because shall not be infringed is very clear in how the law is written. So we have to understand that. Remember, the people that hid Anne Frank were breaking the law. The people that killed Anne Frank and her family were following the law. Just because it is law does not mean that it is moral or a right. And I, hearing this kind of language, it reminds me of there was this guy, Major Ferguson, during the Revolutionary War. He was a British uh, military officer. He invented the Ferguson rifle, and by all counts, was a really nice guy. But um, he told the, uh, he issued a proclamation that said, quote, that the uh, Patriot leaders in what is now Tennessee, where my family lived in the late 1700s, he said they should lay down their arms or, quote, he would lay waste to their country with fire and sword. So these East Tennessee Scots-Irish folks, my ancestors, maybe some of yours, uh, decided that that was enough. When you say you're gonna lay waste to our families with fire and sword, we're gonna meet you head on. And they did, they formed a militia. They were called the Over the Mountain Men. And they came over and defeated Major Ferguson and killed him at the Battle of, of uh, Kings Mountain and uh, his loyalist militia that he had collected over there. So again, we've seen this before. Lay down your arms or I'm gonna put you to the fire and sword and folks rise up. Now, am I advocating violence? Absolutely not. You have to search your own conscience and understand what is going on. But I would tell you, please keep an eye on Virginia, what's going on in Virginia. If it can happen there, it can happen anywhere. Enough said on that. Scott says, good morning, buddy. Gene says, pulled into work, got to run. Thanks, Gene, for being on with us. Stuart says, good morning, Rich. Great show, great information. Okay, so the last thing I got for you, we talked about that, is I'm going to talk to you about the training vault. Now, the training vault, inside there, we have dozens and dozens of modules to keep you and your family safe. And one of the modules that you're going to want to check out is the medical module. We, had, we brought in Mike Fluin, Dr. Dan Olesnicki, SWAT doc, trauma surgeon, trauma doctor, and Mike and Dr. Dan Olesnicki did an entire suite of videos for you. They talk about wound management, they talk about shot placement, tactical shot placement. You can actually watch a video where a SWAT doctor, a medical professional, tells you where he would shoot someone at the greatest effect and why he would shoot people there. Pretty interesting stuff, if you have to. Nobody wants to shoot anybody, I certainly don't, I know you don't, but if, God forbid, you have to, where do you put those rounds to have the greatest effect on your threat. He talks to you about how to set up an IFAT kit, an individual first aid kit, what do you need to have in there, and how do you use it, and lastly, tourniquet selection and application. So check out the medical, you're gonna check out that in the training vault. It is actually where the premium paid content is. You're gonna have to pay uh, less than a dollar a day to gain access to all that information. The first 14 days are free, cost you absolutely nothing to join. So join and check out the medical vault. It will keep you and your family safe. Before we jump off here, um, just wanted to say January the 3rd, I'm going to be in Belfast in Northern Ireland. And I will not be doing coffee with Rich. If we're, if, if we're lucky, Mr. Mike Seeklander will pick up the torch and do a coffee with Mike on next Friday, January the 3rd. On January the 10th, that Friday morning, I'm going to be in the Scottish Highlands in a little cottage uh, next to the water. And if I have good Wi-Fi, I will be doing coffee with Rich. More to follow on that. But thank you for joining me. Anybody have any last-minute comments for me? If not, I'm going to jump off here.
Uh, Mark says they needed that money long before these new laws. I agree with you. A quarter of a million dollars for a, a state as big as Virginia is just a drop in the bucket. It's absolutely nothing. But it's it's interesting that they're that they're releasing that information and for why they're doing that money. I don't know if it's just propaganda, but you're absolutely right, Mark. Uh, Elke says, "Over the mountain." Great song by Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> Skip says, "Great comments on Virginia." Rasmus says, "Guns and metal." I like that. Doug says, thank you, sir. I appreciate the information. Uh, Mark is joining us. Mark, you missed a great show. Hopefully you can watch the reruns. Um, but we had a good show this morning about I'm going to United Kingdom and what I'm carrying with me. It's a pretty interesting show. Gerald says, safe travels. Thanks. Rasmus says, thank you, Rich Brown. Safe travels. Mark says, safe travels. Guys, thank you for being on here. I know we had a long show. Wow, 55 minutes. I apologize for the late show. Somebody won a Tumblr. Guys, stay safe. And remember... The fight is coming. Be ready.